The last task that we need to cover today, setting up peripherals. Now, we've installed the basic system. We've used internet productivity applications, photo editing. We found our way through the whole process of installing new applications. And now, at last, we need to add peripherals like printers. So we went out and dropped about 129 bucks on this here HP OfficeJet 4315 all-in-one, which is a nice complimentary little all-in-one multifunction device. So I did a little bit of research before we chose this printer to make sure there were Linux drivers available. This is a must-do pre-purchase task in Linux. Unlike the Windows or Mac world, don't assume that you're going to be fine when it comes to Linux peripherals. You should be fine, but you might not be fine. When it comes to Linux, plug and pray plays a much bigger role than normal. But certainly, mainstream items like HP printers, you're probably going to be okay, but you need to check. Unfortunately, much like the software installation, the whole printer install process was a bit of a journey of discovery. It was not immediately evident how to do it. I'll show you that in a moment, but first let me show you how to check to see if Linux drivers are available for your printer. And you can do a Google search for Linux printer drivers. It'll probably bring you to a site like the Free Standards Group. And if we look here, they talk a lot about open printing. And it'll tell you they have an actual database of different printers that are available. They have a printer listing page here. So I went through and I put in the model of HP OfficeJet that I'm interested in. And as you can see, there are pretty much every HP model available. Now, just because they have it listed here doesn't mean their driver's available and that they're going to work. As <laughs> is by the printer we chose, because look here, I think I got a bit of a sense of humor. It works mostly. <laughs> well, mostly is pretty good and I'm willing to take a chance. So I installed the printer driver that mostly works. Now here's how I had to install the printer driver. There might be a better way to do it, but this is the one that I figured out. You go into the system and go into system configuration, which brings us into all the settings for all the different hardware pieces of the system. Once I was in there, I chose peripherals, and in the peripherals, this is where we do things like set up our digital camera, our display, we can also set up our printers in here. There I went and I could add a printer. And from here on, it's pretty much just a wizard that walks you through allowing you to choose the correct printer driver. Now I didn't find an exact driver for this model, but I found a close one. I installed it and it works just fine. In fact, let's see, go into our word processor, select print, and we'll let it print just to prove to you that indeed I've got a printer printing in Linux. And it looks like we made it. We've got Linux up and running, and we do have a few scars to prove that we took the journey. So what did I like and what didn't I like about this whole project? Well, first up, the positives. I love the value of being able to take a doorstop and return it to useful life. If you add up all the costs of doing this in Windows, you'd probably be looking at a system that's worth about $1,000. If you add up the price of a cheap Windows PC, add in Office and a photo editor, then install a printer, it's going to be about 1000 bucks. Our bill? about 130 bucks because that's how much the printer cost. Everything else was free. The computer was free and all the software is free. I liked the internet connectivity and tools. Thumbs up on them and I was satisfied with the office applications. I'm okay with most of the media stuff but where Linux fell short, obviously system modification, adding new applications. It's just too confusing the first time through. Good news is, if you can get through it the first time, installing software a second or third time is easy. However, I fear some people will be stumped on the first go-round and never succeed. Now, one application I'm not sure many people can do without is iTunes. There are decent media managers in Linux, but the iPod has over 60% market share, and using one in a Linux box is a bit of a kludge. Real geeks can do it, but without iTunes... The iPod is just another MP3 player. It's currently a huge hole in the Linux world. Overall, though, Linux has really come a long way. I don't love it, but I do love the fact we can return older computers to useful life, and we can hopefully get them in the hands of people who can't afford the latest and greatest in the Windows or Mac world. That's all the time we have, but hopefully you found our exploration of the world of Linux educational and enjoyable. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Dotto Tech.